Well, thank you for coming out and following this uh, this, inter this legislation we're putting out there. In fact, it's not legislation, it's a constitutional amendment. Um, we know that the legislature has behaved well the last decade, and because of that, we've seen significant improvement in Wisconsin's fiscal solvency. But we know that both parties historically have used tricks and gimmicks to balance budgets. Uh, but also we know uh, specifically that you know, the more people that are involved with the process of the financial decision of Wisconsin, the better off we are. So we're introducing two constitutional amendments today. Uh, Senator Markline will talk about the GAP constitutional amendment. Um, I will kick it off by starting about the constitutional amendment that relates to federal funds. Uh, very simply, at the federal level, it's fundamental to our Constitution that the legislature holds the purse strings for spending. And that's been true in Washington, D.C. even to this day. All the spending has to go through Congress, and it's a big deal if someone appropriates funds or spends funds that are not approved by Congress. And that's also true in the states. Back in, during the Great Depression, you kind of picture how this was working, is you have a bunch of legislators without an interstate system who had their own financial strain on them from the Depression, and they forfeited their responsibility to overlook federal funding, and at that time, which was significantly increasing from the federal government to the state. So they pushed off their responsibility, and the legislature continued to do that till it was permanently put in statute. And today, the legislature has pushed off their responsibility to the executive branch to oversee federal funds, and we think this is wrong. So the constitutional amendment that we're proposing very simply says the legislature should do its job. The legislature should provide oversight of all funds spent, including federal funds. And so the process for that is, is that we'll vote on this soon. I think uh, we have a lot of momentum on that. Uh, we vote on it again next session, and ultimately the voters will get to decide about the um, putting that in our constitution to require the legislature to overlook their federal funds. All righty. Good morning. Thank you uh, for being here. Uh, so um, I was first elected in November of 2010, being a, a good uh, uh, CPA uh, uh, legislator elect. I did what every one of us would do, and that is uh, I pulled out the audited financial statements for the state of Wisconsin and uh, spent uh, many, many hours going, going through them. And um, I was disturbed, as my colleague, uh, Senator Koyenga was at that time, we both got elected at the same time, uh, by the financial position of the state of Wisconsin back then. And we've got a graph here to, to our left showing uh, that that's the, the deficits that uh, had been accumulated till uh, about 10 years ago, 2011. When I got elected, we were three billion dollars in the hole on, uh, when you calculate it based on generally accepted accounting principles, which is, in my opinion, the only accurate way to, uh, to measure your financial position. And, you know, how, how did you get three billion dollars in the hole? Uh, we had money in the checkbook, but we were not in good financial shape. Um, and it, as Senator Koyenga mentioned, you know, both parties have kind of used a lot of these uh, gimmicks in the past. Um, in, in the decade uh, preceding uh, my election, um, over a billion dollars was uh, transferred from the uh, uh, transportation fund. Uh, several hundred million dollars transferred from the patient compensation fund. We owed Minnesota reciprocity payments uh, that we just didn't pay, didn't pay the bill. Uh, we delayed state aids to our school districts, moved them from June to July, $75 million. Boom. You know, and, you know, we try to fix the budget like that. And uh, I'll point out that this last uh, budget, we did reverse that $75 million transfer that was done lo a long time ago. So um, what I uh, hope this, uh, or what this GAP constitutional amendment will do is will remove the temptation for future legislators, uh, legislatures, and future governors from using accounting gimmicks uh, to balance the state budget. Why do we need to do it now? We are in great financial shape. We're in the best, our balance sheet is in the strongest position it's been in in at least 30 years. We went back, I went back uh, 30 years and looked at our audited statement. So we're, we're in good financial shape. There's no better time to uh, you know, adopt good policy than when you're in good financial shape. It's kind of hard to tell people to start saving money when they're underwater and barely able to pay their bills. So uh, we're in good financial shape. Now is the time to do it. And uh, anyway, so uh, great uh, constitutional amendment. 
And I believe the citizens of our state believe we're doing this already. Uh, I think they're assuming it, and we have for the last decade, but we want to make sure that future uh, governors and legislators aren't uh, tempted to do it again. Thank you, Senator. And I'm uh, thrilled to be part of this conversation uh, as a member of the Assembly. We have the uh, same momentum uh, that you heard from uh, both of my Senate colleagues uh, around these important bills. Uh, I've been uh, fortunate enough to uh, uh, introduce the constitutional amendment resolution with uh, Senator uh, Koenig around uh, having uh, the legislator bring, uh, legislature bring the balance back to Wisconsin in how we handle federal dollars. Uh, I think as you see across the country, uh, there are more calls for how are these dollars invested, are we getting out of them what we should, are they solving the types of problems that we want. Uh, those questions will be answered uh, as we move forward uh, in, in time. Uh, we believe that the, the timing is right for uh, this uh, uh, resolution to come through. As never uh, before, uh, outside of the Great Depression, have we uh, allowed one person to uh, allocate federal funds this way. This brings uh, voices that are represented by 133 of us here. And uh, I believe the timing is right uh, to uh, have this balance restored and uh, bring us back uh, where all voices in the state are heard on how we uh, disperse federal dollars and get out of it what we need. Thank you. Uh, Dewey's Trouble here. I am uh, very proud to be supporting these two efforts. To me, it's always about transparency in government, and it's about giving people a voice. And uh, these two topics we're talking about do, do both. Uh, gap accounting, it's the only way to really be truthful in what your financial situation is. Uh, it certainly is done in the private sector every day. There's no reason why it's not done in, in government. And um, it's a good proposition. We, I'm thrilled to see it move ahead. Uh, as far as federal dollars, again, this isn't uh, Julius Caesar is not running the show here. This is a democratic republic, and we have people that are elected. Uh, close to the people they represent, and we want them to be able to have a greater voice in how these federal monies are spent, not just one person making those decisions. So I'm very proud that our legislature has taken up both these issues, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing them proceed. Thank you. I just want to wrap this up by saying this is this is not a partisan um, you know reaction to Governor Evers. I think this is just responsibility, constitutional responsibility of the legislature. You know, it's just also, you know, we don't know who the governor is going to be when this legislation passes uh, three, four years from now. But what we do know is that there's not one person in this entire six million state, six million person state, that knows everything about agriculture and transportation and education issues and criminal justice issues and the whole plethora of issues that, that we deal with. And what's so important about having the legislative oversight of these funds is that you have citizen legislators who are experts in their field and represent parts of the state that have expertise in different parts where we could use these federal funds. So this is bigger than any uh, one party versus another party or one branch versus another branch. This is just very fundamental, going back to the principles of the Constitution as far as the people's house, the people's branch of government, having oversight of funds and doing it in a responsible and transparent nature.